So one really cool thing that you might not be aware of with the new build of Blender 5.0 is that adaptive subdivision is no longer experimental. So if you're not aware of what adaptive subdivision is, essentially, when we have a displaced texture that is displacing, it actually bases the density of the topology as it's rendering on the proximity of the camera. So if the camera is in really close, it'll sort of do a really sort of high subdivision. And when it's further out, it'll be lower definition. And this way, it's a lot more computationally less expensive, right? Now, the thing is, and I'm in Blender 4.5, just to demonstrate the difference. You can see here in Blender 4.5, to here I have adaptive subdivision enabled. And you can see I have experimental enabled. And here in my modifiers, I have the option for adaptive subdivision. If I go back and turn it to support it, you can see I can go back here and things change over here. So let's go now into Blender 5.0. I'll show you where to get a texture, how to use adaptive subdivision to get this really sort of nice displacement and how you can do that in Blender 5.0. So go ahead, open up Blender 5.0, go over to the internet and type in Polyhaven, click on Polyhaven. It's a free website. You can go to assets, then go to textures. The really cool thing is already set up for you. So you just have to import it into Blender. There's no node work required. Then let's just go to whatever you want. I'm going to go with, I don't know, I'll go with terrain. Then I'll go to rock. You can do whatever you want. And then I might just get one of these that I think looks pretty cool. And by the way, once again, this is all free. So um, there's no account required or anything, but you can choose to support these guys on Patreon if you want, which is a really good idea. Um, but I'm gonna go maybe with this one over here. I think that looks really cool. I'm gonna make sure it's just a default here. So it's 2K, it's set to Blender, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click download. And it's now downloaded inside of my um, downloads folder. I'm just gonna go ahead and extract that zip file. And now I've got a zip file that's been extracted and inside of there is a blend file with some textures. So all you have to do is go into Blender 5.0, simply go into file and then go to append, then go to wherever that's downloaded. So for me, that's my downloads over here. Then I'm gonna click on that rock boulder. Inside of there, there's a blend file, which I'll double click on. Then I'm just gonna go to the materials file and then click on this material and go ahead append. Now I'm just gonna select my cube here and tab into edit mode. With it all active, I'll right click and go subdivide and under the subdivision tab, tab here, I'll maybe give it something like 20 subdivisions. Then with it all still active, you can press F3 and go to sphere, click on to sphere and then just move your mouse to round it out. Go back into object mode, right click and go shade smooth. And now we can go over to our render engine. We can change it to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it, but you can just stick to CPU. And let's just go over a max sample of 45. And now to add the material with your object selected, simply go over to your materials tab, come to the drop down, and then click on whatever material you imported, right? So now if we go over to our modifiers, we go add modifier, we go search and type in sub, we can get the subdivision surface. And now adaptive subdivision here is available without having to go over here and change it to experimental, which is really, really cool. So what we can do, make sure that's enabled. Go over to your material and then you can go over to your settings and under here you just want to make sure that instead of displacement only it's set to displacement and bump so you get the best of both worlds so now if you go into your camera view by pressing zero on the, com on the number pad you can come in here you can go z and go rendered and check that out now you have nice physical displacement and this is relative to the distance of the camera so i'm going to quickly go shift a i'm just going to add in an area light I'll move it up. I'll give it maybe a strength of like 200. I'll increase the size, maybe bring it a bit further away. And I might just duplicate that and rotate it. This is not really a lighting tutorial. I'm just kind of giving you guys an idea here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the actual object here. You can simply go into your shading. And if you wanted to, you can come in here and go Z and go rendered. And if you wanted to make the displacement more intense, you can simply come here to this node setup. Go to this displacement node, which is already set up for you. And you can go here to the scale and make it 0.3 or whatever value you want. You might even go a bit higher, maybe 0.6, but you can see here, we have some really beautiful displacement. So now let's try this out in Blender. So I'm going to go in nice and close. So we get a lot of resolution and I might just save this to my desktop. And now let's go render and let's click on render image. And here we go, guys, that is the render. So you can now see we have this really nice displacement and because the camera is nice and close here, it's giving us a lot of resolution. So this is the nice thing with this sort of adaptive resolution where it's 
what is based on sort of the proximity of the camera when you're rendering. So go ahead, try out adaptive subdivision. It's no longer experimental inside of Blender 5.0. It's now the stable thing that we can rely on inside of Blender by default in the subdivision um, surface modifier. So thank you for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe and like.